Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us again at yet another exciting and awesome Paloma AMA Twitter Spaces. This is a, a special Twitter Spaces for us today. Today is September 7th. It's Wednesday, September 7th. And um, we're super excited about um, all that we're going to discuss today. And so if you are listening, welcome um, to this Twitter Spaces. And if you are reading the transcript and enjoying the YouTube video, uh, thanks for joining in and taking a look. Um, these these uh, AMAs continue to be our way to essentially report on um, what is happening in Paloma and uh, to do so on a weekly basis so that uh, we are keeping track not only of the successes and the wins, but also uh, giving folks an update on what is to come. And joining me today uh, is Vera. Uh, from the uh, product and marketing team at Volume. Hello, Vera. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, welcome aboard and, 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 uh, and thank you for joining us. Uh, and what we're going to do uh, for today's agenda is we're going to talk a little bit about um, what has happened in the past week um, as uh, we are uh, now uh, completing a full cycle a full weekly cycle um, of uh, being on Paloma Test Nest 10, um, and that's Paloma version 0.8.1 and um, Pigeons Relay Software 0 0.7.0. And so I'll start off with a welcome to the Paloma community. Um, if you're listening to this um, or if you're in the Paloma Telegram, welcome aboard. I want to say thank you to all the Test Nest validators um, who are on our network. Um, I think we have now had 16 validators um, essentially burning through th their ETH balances to create a heartbeat. Um, we also want to say, what is Paloma before we jump in? Uh, so Paloma is uh, a Cosmos SDK messaging blockchain. It's meant to be the fastest message relay blockchain on the planet and also the smartest. And what does that mean by fast? Um, essentially, all the validators who have extensive data center expertise are able to keep RPC endpoints running across any target chain that uh, essentially governance is approved. And then messages can be sent um, from Paloma to any of these target chains. And of course, the pigeons will run attestation awareness checking and bring back the status of those messages or any additional information back to the Cosmos SDK chain where fast computational logic can deliver the ability for developers to scale impact, scale meshes delivery across multiple chains uh, at the same time. So think of it as remote control blockchain, but now you can remote control any smart contract across any number of chains um, and cheaply, fast and smartly. Uh, we're just gonna say congratulations to the entire Paloma network. Uh, we, as of this moment, uh, this is a first, so this is new. Uh, we've completed over 560 heartbeats onto the Ethereum mainnet. So just to give clarity, what this means is that this is a test nest network. This is, first of all, this is a test net, um, test nest of non-investor validators. These are just folks that, you know, decided that they were crazy birds, coo coo, to want to run um, a node. Uh, they had, they're not being incentivized. There's no airdrop. Uh, there is no, um, you know, freebies. This is just, hey, um, if you believe and if you are curious, come aboard. So we want to say thank you, special thanks to all the node operators. And what that means is that um, essentially the Cosmos SDK Paloma chain has communicated and established a secure channel to the Ethereum network. This network, this channel is secure. Of course, you can say, Tarek, what is it secured by? Well, it is secured by testnet grains, <laughs> which are worth nothing. But... Um, the beauty of it is that the validators have decided to run this. Now, um, let's hand wave slashing aside and let's hand wave the security model just to say that this is a first. Uh, and what we think is that what we like about this is that this is a, one, maybe the first permissionless um, uh, secure network validator set uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem. And um, we're going to be sharing more of this um, wonderful testnet as we continue to upgrade and ship more um, improvements to the system. Um, of course, tomorrow is Thursday, so we'd like to let validators know um, because we've learned over the week that we, you know, we, our weekly upgrades are pretty blistering. So this week we're taking a break. We're going to give the birds a rest. Um, we will not have a validator update tomorrow, Thursday, uh, September 8th. Um, we expect to have validators set updates coming back next week, Thursday, 
um, on schedule. And of course, what we may do is, um, I think next time we'll do governance so we can have them up and running two days and then have chain halt so that everybody upgrades. Um, and so we are still going to continue on. We have more stuff coming, but today we're gonna to talk about logic calls on Paloma. Um, this is core to what we do. So to give you an, a sense of why is this chain different from other chains, it's really gonna come down to sending logic calls. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about logic calls and Veer is gonna jump in and help me as we go. So why don't we start a definition? What is a logic call? Um, so when we think about cross-chain communications um, and cross-chain activity, um, everything requires you to send a transaction, right? So what are blockchains? Blockchains are append only transaction stores, data stores, right? Secured by some token. Um, these transactions must be sent to the target chain in order for you to communicate. In order for you to have a cross-chain communication, you need to send this transaction to another chain. Um, on Paloma, we call these logic calls because you know, it comes from Ethereum, right? When it's, uh, essentially Ethereum executes a logic call on a contract, that contract will then do something, right? Um, it will either process or compute some value. And that message needs to be sent over in a way that um, it can be signed. So the message must be signed as a transaction. It must be broadcast by an RPC endpoint. And you know, once that is broadcast to the target blockchain, uh, the target blockchain must understand what it's receiving. Now, not only the target blockchain, but essentially the virtual machine which received this logic call, for example, on Ethereum, must understand the information in order for the information to be processed properly, right? Because you can send a transaction, but if the contents, sometimes we call it payload, um, and that payload consists of the logic call, right? Because then the payload consists of the target account, target trans, you know, target chain, target account, um, uh, target contract and, you know, all, and then of course the logic call, if the logic call is in a way that the target chain cannot understand, for example, Ethereum, then the call will fail. And if the call fails, then, you know, usually we'll get a transaction reverted um, or um, a transaction was unsuccessful. And of course, then that means that the pigeon has to come back and say, dude, listen, whew, that was really bad. It didn't happen. And it may have cost gas. So, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to submit, a how Paloma uses, or how Paloma has sort of created an architecture to submit these logic calls, because that's important, right? The promise Paloma wants to deliver is to say, listen, any logic call that you want to send to any target blockchain, Polygon, Arbitrum, Ethereum, Avalanche, uh, Solana, any of these logic calls, Paloma can get the message there in a way that the receiving target chain and target account can understand. And because that message can be sent in a way that understand that infrastructure works so quickly, you want to use Paloma to send your messages. All right, so um, I'll stop there and pause for a second and ask Vera, Vera, did I miss anything else with how we define logic calls? And if that's good enough, do you wanna talk about how we send logic calls or how we've been doing logic calls on Paloma? Uh, yeah, I, th I think you covered it on what they are, um, and I'm happy to talk about it a little bit more. Um, you know how how you send them from from Paloma. So you know on on the target chain, so on Ethereum in our case, um, we have a contract which is called Compass EVM. Right. Um, and it's Compass because it really shows you the direction. So it basically guides the pigeon <laughs> to where where they need to go cool. to deliver that message. Cool. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and uh, it's it's actually really simple. So um, Compass EVM is already deployed. Um, so each um, whenever we deploy to a new target chain, we also deploy a Compass contract. Um, and then all you have to do if you want to actually send a logic call to another target chain is you also need a Cosm Wasm smart contract on Paloma that then... Um, essentially sends when when executed um sends a message uh, essentially a logic call message to the compass evm which in turn then will um execute another message on a smart contract on the target chain so we're really talking about three contracts here one viper or solidity contract on ethereum um, one Cosm wasn't smart contract on Paloma and then Compass EVM, which guides all these logic calls and ensures that they're being executed in the right place. Now, are we, what about the Cosm, Cosmos side? Now, do we not have to have the Cosm wasn't contract 
information, this transaction that has been built up in the Cosmosm contract, shouldn't that on the Cosmos site also be encoded? Um, or shouldn't the Cosmos site handle encoding um, or sending of the message in a way that the target chain can understand? Or is that done on the Cosmosm side? Well, you're hitting right. <laughs> you're hitting mm, right yes. into where we. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's we're we're hitting to the storm, pigeons. We're heading into a storm. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, of course, what you know. So you have these three sides, and and the go side. So you know, a message must be sent queued up, and and Paloma messages are queued in the in in actually the go side of the cosmos. So we have, you know, again, Pigeon, our relay software, um, essentially has, a, you know, we have a module for handling messages on the Paloma side. And so we call this the message queue. And the message queue on the Paloma side um, must, you know, essentially what we want to do is make sure that the message can be encoded in the correct way so that when it gets picked up by a Pigeon, that encoding is appropriate. Now, currently in Paloma, um, what we're finding out happening is that the Co the Cosmo side and the Go side of the encoding um, is sending the message over as a string. And really um, the Ethereum side, so now when the pigeon takes that string and then you know takes it, signs it, and then sends it to the Ethereum contract, the Ethereum contract says, oh, dude, what, what are you doing? Bro, bro, no, no, no cool, no cool. Um, and what has happened is the message is not, you know, essentially the message is failing. Uh, so this means that the encoding currently in Paloma uh, is incorrect. And what we should be sending, um, or what Ethereum is expecting is a byte array, and what we're sending is a string. And so we found this out while testing uh, last week, um, or between this week and last week. And so what we're gonna be doing is upgrading and changing and adding sort of new test coverage for ensuring that the messages uh, essentially are able to be received by the target chain in the proper encoding in the byte array. I mean, these are, of course, there may be many unknown unknowns, and this is just for the Ethereum EVM. So we may have surprises that come up, um, but good thing that we're testing in mainnet because now um, we should be able to see, again, on Ethereum mainnet, if, uh, main, Ethereum mainnet if, a, if, a, if a transaction is successful. Um, a, a pigeon the other day asked me, why don't we do this on testnet um, on, on Ropstein or uh, uh, elsewhere? And I, and I said to them, it would be good to do that um, but one of the things we're looking for is to understand the cost in gas, gas in real terms, because that is the problem of Ethereum as an L1, right, is being able to manage gas. And so we will talk a little bit about gas a little later, but I think before we jump to gas, what we'll say is that we're going to continue to test. Um, so uh, validators should expect a new test nest upgrade coming in the, the next week. Um, and that upgrade should um, address our byte array issues problem for Ethereum. And the way we're going to see that or talk about it is we're going to have successful laying of eggs. And so uh, what the hell are eggs? Well, pigeons lay eggs, right? Get it, you know? That's, that's how pigeons they... come from eggs. Pigeons <laughs> come from eggs, right? Exactly. And we had a marriage, right? Last week we had a marriage. <laughs> and so the pigeons made love to the Paloma, <laughs> another pigeon. And um, because of this marriage um, and the successful marriage, we expect to now have successful laying of eggs. Um, uh, so pigeons, please find a room. Um, and what this means is that um, the eggs are going to be our way of testing um, that we're able to essentially execute Cosmos and contracts that will yield um, you know, uh, egg type forms on the Ethereum network. So look out for that. And of course, if we're successful, you'll hear us, you know, boasting about it on Telegram. Um, so please look out. All right. So what does that mean? Gas management. Why we do this on mainnet? We do this on mainnet because we have to understand the cost of gas. Um, and gas is a big deal on Ethereum L1. Not necessarily a big deal in the Cosmos ecosystem, right? Because Cosmos transactions on most Cosmos chains is sufficiently cheap that you never really notice the gas. But because most of the liquidity still lies on Ethereum, we believe that gas management should be top of mind. And I think what we're going to be working on as we move forward as the next version is gas management. All right, so Vera, do you want to talk about what is gas management? Yeah, just to, to add that before we jump into the, the mechanics, um, not only has it been helpful for us to find out how much it actually costs, but also um, we've been fine-tuning on how... Um, you know, what validators need to stay engaged um, since they are spending real ETH. 
Uh, so that's been also really good learning. Right. Learning yeah. Right. Right. And we're going to talk um, about gas refunds at some point as well. So. Uh, yeah, I guess. Mm. Uh, well, let's maybe start with um, what what the end goal is once uh, once we have it implemented is essentially um, that whenever a pigeon is supposed to send a message, the message sender, so whoever, you know, wants to lay an egg or do anything else, <laughs> maybe create a baby pigeon, um, that uh, that sender will have to prepay the gas for that message to ensure that the pigeon is actually motivated to send the message. Um, and also that payment um, will include a markup to ensure that there is enough money to also, well, I say money, but really enough gas funds to uh, reimburse pigeons for the Valset updates. So really to supporting the network. So you can think of it as, you know, there is a portion of, of that prepayment that is just for the gas for the pigeon that sends the actual message. And then there is some some uh, um, percentage that goes to, into a, what we call a security security fund that really is designed to reimburse all pigeons that are, um, you know, uh, sending those valid updates, which is really the heartbeat, ensuring that the network is secure and alive. That's right. So we want to create, so so we think of this as a, not just an infrastructure play as a business um, that should motivate pigeons to want to uh, essentially secure the network. And that that motivation is that there is a gas fee market for sending messages cross-chain, right? So um, now keep in mind, there are other folks who do this, right? So, you know, you have uh, layer zero, which has relayers that actually get paid um, to do this. So layer zero has already shown, yes, you know, you can have a protocol where you pay the relayers to send the messages. Um, and so they send messages cross into the target chain. Um, and we have seen other, you know, um, protocols like Axelar and UMI, where the validators are essentially paid um, from the, you know, from the fund, you know, from the actual treasury for relaying messages. In IBC, relayers are opt out so or opt in. And so they're not compensated uh, specifically in the IBC world for sending messages. So it is the Paloma vision and the Paloma point of view in that to have an active and really uh, a li lively network, there must be some business at hand. And that business is the business of securing the message delivery. And that business of securing message delivery comes at a cost. There's a security cost for that. And that security cost must be borne by the message sender. And so if we are able to, so this is a hypothesis, so we're not sure if it will work. Um, but the hypothesis we have is that um, if we are able to, you know, and, and I remember we call this FedEx chain for a reason, right? If we're able to deliver on time and deliver messages, then people will have a choice to use Paloma or versus their substitute message relay services to delivering messages because of its ability to you know, deliver securely. And of course, then it'll be a question of cost, right? So if the cost is too expensive, people will not use Paloma. They will use other alternatives. If the cost is an effective differentiator or a value proposition, then they will use Paloma. So we think, and our, again, our hypothesis is really the cost or the value proposition will be the compute, right? So sending message is very expensive, but if you want fast response, because the pigeons are able to monitor and are actively monitoring and actively sending, then you will get faster compute, low cost compute um, and low cost storage on Paloma that you can use then again, continue to send messages. For the, again, hypothesis, we're not sure, the people who we think may want this uh, are folks who are like, listen, I wanna send multiple messages to multiple target chains. I want to control all those multiple messages to multiple target chains from one place. I don't want to use five different you know, protocols to send messages, I just wanna use one. And I want to have that protocol have as much reach. I don't care what the chain is. I don't want to hear excuses about this chain is not supported at this time. As long as there's desire to have the chain supported, then the pigeons will be there. Governance will approve the chain. Chain will be deployed and messages will be sent permissionlessly. There's no need to ask anyone for permission to approve or say this chain is just, hey, I want to send messages. If governance says yes, you know, um, we want to send messages to, you know, um, new chain number XYZ123, as long as the message senders are willing to pay for the security 
of Mesozona chain, that target chain will live. So gas management is essentially the heart of the pigeon um, and also the heart of the flock. And uh, we think a way to incentivize folks, which is why, again, we don't think we need to give free, you know, give sort of test and incentives. Um, if, you know, Paloma is successful, then um, gas fees will essentially be accruing immediately, right? So think of it as, wow, testing it's live. If people get paid for sending, I'm like, yeah, we, um, we can actually test that model as we head into mainnet. So um, we, yeah, but again, this is a hypothesis. So we're still testing it. We still have to verify truth. Um, and going forward, um, the next thing we'll be spending a lot of time working on is um, our gas management module. We've already written it up. We've, we've, you know, learning from what we have. And we just want to thank all the pigeons who put up their 0.1 ETH. Um, and we want to thank the pigeons who've withdrawn their ETH. We're seeing pigeons already withdrawing ETH um, and risking jail time. So for all you pigeons, this is helpful that you do this so we can actually see how refunds should work. And we actually get a workout in how gas, um, you know, how we can actually check for gas. Um, today, we are refunding gas um, semi-automatically. And the way we do it is, uh, you know, um, uh, a very, very, uh, you know, automatic process, highly automated, but, you know, the most advanced AI um, in the world, um, a, a, a wet brain goes and looks and says, I'll run the, <laughs> I'll run the repayment. <laughs> It's, I don't know if it's as big as a pigeon brain. <laughs> this, uh, this advanced brain says, ooh, cool, I need to refund pigeons today and presses a button. Um, and what happens is, uh, you know, this, you know, there's a smart contract and, and a system that actually says, great, here are all the pigeon validators set addresses, here's their balances, refund them. Um, and what is happening is that, again, it's very, very, you know, low tech. It's meant to be, again, just a stand in for gas management. But what we are noticing is that pigeons want to claim their, their balances immediately, and we should make it easy for pigeons to reclaim initial balances, um, add new funds. But we're going to warn people. I think what, I'm, what, I've, what I was warning pigeons before in the, in the telegram is that they should expect that gas will be increasing, right? So for now, it's a safe space for pigeons to say put up 0.1 ETH. I think right now we've lowered the requirement to 0.05 ETH. However, if messages are being sent, then pigeons have to prepay gas because they're paying gas ahead of the, the transaction. Then pigeons may find themselves not able to send messages if their gas balances are too low. So to be specific, if there is a transaction that requires a deposit, for example, into Uniswap, right, or it requires a deposit into Curve, and the gas fees for that deposit on Curve ETH1 are very high, then the pigeons in the validator set will need to have a balance to cover that cost. If the pigeons do not have a balance to cover that cost, they are unable to participate in the fee market, right? So yeah, you'll still be sending balance set updates, cool, cool. Yes, you'll still be receiving um, inflation rewards, cool, cool, but you won't be receiving um, fees for message delivery. And that is money you don't want to leave on the table because that is essentially a free floating number that pigeons get to decide how much they want to charge. And so if pigeons can decide that they want to be in that fee market, then that is additional revenue that we think pigeons don't want to leave on the, on, in the nest, right? You want to, you know, essentially don't leave those seeds uh, unattended. And I didn't, I've never met a pigeon that wouldn't eat anything put in front of them. So, <laughs> uh, so pigeons will want to make sure that they have those balances. So yes, it's uh, again, a hypothesis, but we suspect um, pigeons will find themselves, pigeons that want to compete will have to have higher gas balances, which means higher ETH balances um, so that they can capture it. It will be a competitive area for validators and pigeons. We think this is exciting. Because remember, now we're doing it against multiple target chains, right? So think of it as Polygon. Whoa, okay, where do I, where do I put my balances? Okay, there's not too many transactions on Polygon, but there's a lot of transactions on ETH. But hey, gas prices on Polygon are nice. They're dependable, they're smooth, they're cheap. Maybe that's where you know, pigeon balances would like to be. So um, we think, again, we're, we're really excited to see this message routing market. Um, we think the analog exists in the real world, so we're not inventing a new market. It's pretty simple. You know, it's called a courier service. Everybody pays a courier service. You know, FedEx makes a big business out of it. So does UPS, postal service. This is about message delivery. 
And so, um, again, I still think we should have stuck with FedEx chain. You know, is that, was that a bad idea to switch? It's not as fun. It's not as fun. I mean, oh, come on. It, was, it, it sounds ugly, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nico. We're saying don't do FedEx chain. I remember Nico's face when I said FedEx chain. He's crazy. He's like, oh, my God. I'm going to puke. <laughs> um, so, um, but it is essentially FedEx chain, but, you know, a nice name, Paloma. Um, and, of course, shout out to the uh, volume team that has, uh, is working on Paloma's new website. You guys are doing some cool stuff. But, um, yes, so um, validators should expect that requirements for gas will be increased. However, this means that there may be new market opportunities, right? You know, do people lend pigeons money um, so that they can then pay gas and then collect a fee? Will a lending market arise out of this? Quite possibly. Um, will a new exchange arise for forward contracts on future prices of gas fees? If there's a player that can determine future gas fees and sell that as a service so pigeons can better price Will that be something? Um, we're very, very excited about this to be really about communications infrastructure. So um, gas management is, uh, is, is our next phase and we have been learning so that we can dive in deep. Vera, did I miss anything? Um, I, I would just add that I think, you know, one of the reasons that we're working on gas management next is obviously it's a big one, so we want to knock it out, but also um, like as gas prices increase, um, this gas management mo module ensures that it's completely trustless. Um, you know, the pigeons don't have to trust us to press a button to reimburse them. They can actually attest that the payment has been made and that they can choose the payment, um, the, the minimum payment that they require for delivering that message. So it really sets us up nicely for actually sending more messages without us having right. to right. know, um, ensure them through our telegram. <laughs> our, yeah. Uh, That's like right. Real pigeon validators that we will actually reimburse them. Yeah, exactly. They, they should be, it should be trustless, right? Um, one, pigeons will see that uh, messages have been prepaid. Two, so they know there's a balance to pay them. So that confidence means that they can raise funds, get their funds ready for prepayment, deliver messages, and, and return. So we're excited for that. Um, we have more on top of gas management. We'll leave it here. I hate roadmaps, so we won't talk about them. But for now, um, this is where we're going. And we want to say, you know, thank you to all the validators who've come, stayed without incentive, um, spent money. We know real money and real ETH to be in this network. Your proof of work stands as evidence of your contribution. And um, we're looking forward to making sure you can collect free revenue for sending messages. All right. We're at the bottom of the hour. I think this is it. Um, I don't think we have any questions right now. Do we have any questions? No questions, no hands. All right. So uh, look out for us on our Telegram. Uh, and of course, um, anybody can join the Paloma Test Nest. Um, we don't do any special filtering. We don't do any um, type stuff. If you can handle it, if you can bring it on, come aboard um, and uh, join the flock. With that, we leave you uh, until next week. Thank you. Have a good one. Cool. Cool. Bye. Cool. <laughs>